You're listening to the Drummer Daily Podcast, the only daily podcast dedicated just to drummers. Go to my website at danielhadaway.com. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Drummer Daily. Um, It is kind of thundering and gloomy outside, so you might hear um, some of that in the background. There is not a construction crew building anything next to my house, and no, the roof did not fall in. Um, It is just thunder. So, um, hope you're doing well. Um, You'll hear me talking a little quiet. It's because my son is napping uh, one floor above me right now. And I don't think that it matters. I don't think I'd wake him up. Uh, But you never know. Why not take it easy? Why not not play it safe? Um, But we're not here to talk about playing it safe today. We're actually talking about the opposite. Uh, So, when I I bring up... uh, It's funny because I never... I never... Until I started doing this podcast, I never really realized how much... Uh, things I learned in high school, uh, as far as drumming goes, I never realized how much that stuff affected me and how much of that I carried with me until um, I started doing this podcast. And I realized I, I, a lot of times I, I have these ideas in my head about playing drums, and I always, I always, um, you know, just think about them. But then I never, uh, until I start recording these podcasts, I never really think about, think to explain or think about where they came from. And so when I do this podcast, I start talking about where they came from, and I realize, man that came from high school and so did that and so did that and eventually it's like man did I learn anything after high school um and I'm definitely not like Uncle Rico like I'm not like obsessed with high school I didn't think it was like my glory days but um I learned a lot as far as drumming goes um I'm very grateful for that and uh hey that's not a bad thing to have right something that you're grateful for that you learned uh anyway something else I learned in high school uh and this uh, I mentioned I think a few few episodes ago about how I was in the, uh, uh, how I was in the pit and marching band. And that was, I think that was the, uh, that was the always repeat your mistakes episode because the people that the judges don't know that the judges don't know that you're, um, that they don't have the sheet music in front of them to know whether or not you're playing what you're supposed to. So if you're the only one doing it, you can kind of do whatever, as long as you repeat it, it looked like you meant to do it. You're fine. So in those same, uh, time, that same time period, um, other, other songs, in our in our repertoire um, for marching band that same year that my freshman year that we, I was playing in the pit and marching band in the front um, I wasn't always playing a giant gong I was playing uh, some xylophone and some marimba marimba and I think there was a shaker at one point that I had to play all kinds of stuff and uh, as far as like showmanship goes one thing that we were taught was uh, from the audience perspective. Um, If you can't see it, you can't hear it. And what that means is uh, the little nuanced, quiet shaker part that I was playing in in, in the middle of a giant football field where people were talking and, you know, not really paying attention while I'm playing. Um, And there's a massive, you know, 150 member band behind me blowing loud noise. Um, if, If I wasn't holding up that shaker or making sure people could see that I was playing it, the nuance and the quiet parts of it, um, weren't going to be perceived. People weren't going to basically people, exactly what I said, people, if you can't, if they couldn't see it, they couldn't hear it. Um, and so it was always exaggerate your movements, always make it obvious that you're playing this thing. Hey, look at this. I'm playing this thing. Here it is. Now, um, this actually is not about doing that on the drums. Uh, I understand that many Many of you who listen are church drummers or worship drummers, and I certainly would not suggest uh, adopting the "if you can't see it, you can't hear it" mentality on the drums in church. Um, that uh, I've, I've seen drummers who do that, and that is that might just be the worst thing ever. So um, I'm not suggesting that. But there's another side of that, and, and and basically, I think what that what that point of if you can't see it, you can't hear it. What that actually gets at is the concept of what people see actually affects how they hear the music that you're playing. So what I'm trying to say is this. How you look when you play the drums actually affects what people are hearing from you. Um, and let me give you an example. Um, there are many drummers that I've experienced, especially because uh, I've seen a lot of other drummers play. It's actually interesting, you know, you, um, not just at shows, but like more, you know, I'm older. I don't go to a bunch of shows at clubs anymore or anything like that, like I used to. But 
I uh, when I travel with the, with the band with All Sons and Daughters, I do um, we we have in the past played a lot of conferences or a lot of festivals, and so I get a chance to see a lot of drummers, um, and especially when I play conferences or uh, uh, like church events, and there's other there's other like local local bands like non professional bands playing. I'll notice the drummers, and I'll notice that they, like, I like, might be in the back of the room, like, you know, we might show up, you know, we come in, and the thing's already going, the whole event's already going on, so we come in the back, you know, of the, the stage or whatever, and we can hear the music playing, but we can't see it because we're behind the stage or whatever. Um, we kind of get in, and we get settled, and then the thing's still going on, and we've got a long time to wait till we sound check or play or whatever, so I might walk out and go, go, go kind of see what's going on with the music out front. So I'll go out front. And while I'm listening, before I get out there, I'll hear the music and I'll be like, man, that, you know, drummer sounds pretty solid. Sounds great. Feels great. Um, and then the, the second I walk out into the room and see the drummer, I'm like, oh no, what happened? That feels terrible. It sounds terrible. Like the, the, the feel isn't great. And what's weird is I close my eyes and I'm like, no, no, that, that, that's, it sounds fine. But then I look at the person and it feels terrible. And what I realize is that their posture on the drums is really tense or uptight. Their, 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 their drums are set up in a way where they don't seem relaxed and don't look comfortable playing. And it affects my perception of how the music feels. Um, it, the person looks uncomfortable and in, in, in my mind, it makes me uncomfortable, even if they're, they sound fine. And I'm not, obviously not saying that, especially church drumming is a show, but the whole point of like church drumming, worship drumming, is to not be a distraction, is to is to facilitate other people singing, the people in, in, that are sitting in the audience, people sitting out front in the congregation, facilitate them singing the songs without distraction and, 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 and expressing the songs. So, um, but there's a drummer on stage still as a part of that. And so there is a, so you're gonna be looking at that musician at some point if you're in the congregation or you're in the audience. And the way that you look playing certainly affects how people feel when they're, when they're taking part in that music. And so I don't really have a specific tip for you to, to relax, how to relax, but I would just say, think about how you look when you play drums. Um, I would say everyone's got an iPhone or an Android phone, like a smartphone now. Just set up a video, you know, set up a, set it up, prop it up on a coffee mug or something if you have to, or you have a little tripod, you can do that. But set up a, a way of recording yourself playing drums on video. And it doesn't matter if it sounds terrible because you're not going to listen to it. You're just going to look at it and think about, man, I look really uncomfortable when I do that. I should probably work on that uh, because it affects my audience. It affects the people who are listening to the music. So I would just encourage you to... Um, to think about how, how you look when you play the drums, not from a style perspective, but just from a relaxation perspective. And, um, oh, a good example of someone that personally for me, I can't, it's hard for me to watch them play, but they feel great as a drummer, and this is his style, is the guy from, the drummer for the Black Keys. Um, he looks, when I see him play, he looks, especially on the hi-hat, he looks um, really uncomfortable, but then, uh, when you hear it, it sounds great. It sounds fine. And so like I've watched them on TV, like Austin city limits and stuff. And I just learned that like, it, it actually makes me feel on edge. It's not, I can't ever calm my mind down enough to enjoy the music because I'm always distracted by it. And maybe it's just my pet peeve and that's all it is. Um, but, uh, that's a good example. You're looking for someone who, uh, by watching them, they change the perception of how, of how they're playing. Uh, you should, you should find a video of, of them playing on YouTube and see how his playing might affect or his, the way he looks when he plays might affect your perception of how he sounds. Um, so that's my tip for today. Try to look more relaxed when you play the drums. You, uh, you might be pleased with how it goes. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.